Thank God it's Friday. Share this. Because we're getting ready to get you healed. From the crown of your head. To the soles of your feet. And we're getting ready to get your money healed. Everywhere your money is. Your money need to be healed. In whose name? In Jesus name. My God, my God, my God, my God. Ready Periscope? Share with everybody you know. Facebook, share with everybody you know. People need to be healed. In their mind, and their emotions, and their feelings. But they also need to be healed in their cash. In their bank account. In their um, credit score. Now come on up in here. They need to be healed in their situation. Life more abundantly. Health more abundantly. Uh, abundantly come on y'all are we gonna get that right now come on up in here come on y'all because we're gonna do it right now i'm giving you time to get the people on here i'm giving you time because i'm ready it's friday i am excited i got some good stuff for you tonight some real good stuff for you tonight so so get ready because god is with us Jesus Christ is still in control. I've seen a lot of attacks on the health, but I've seen a whole lot of attacks on your money. Pastor Deborah Robinson, thank you, Father, for allowing me to get. Ooh, God bless Pastor and First Lady. Come on, get to know. Hey, Pastor Deborah Robinson on Facebook, God bless you. God bless you and your whole family. You, your husband, and your whole house. Ooh, come on up in here. Tell Deacon Robinson, he get ready to get blessed too. All this coming through you to them. Your, all your daughters, your sons, your grandchildren, everybody. Your whole church in Rona Rapids, North Carolina. Y'all, come on up in here, y'all. Blessings for you right now tonight. Oh, just got out of MRI today. And I know all is well. I took an MRI I want them to look all in my body. I took MRI, what, about hmm, three, four months ago. <laughs> Healthiest man on earth. Come on up in here. Come on up in here, Jesus. My God, my God. I'm like, since I'm covered, since I'm covered, since God has blessed me and my whole house to be covered by him and insurance, I might as well take all the tests I can so they can tell me what I already know. Confirm that I'm the healthiest man on earth. Come on here, Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. You tell them. I love y'all. But let's get ready to go. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you honor. And I give you all of the glory. Honey, is my cross over there? Yeah. I need it. Thank you. Holy and healed. Oh, there it is. Pastor says she's holy and healed. Thank you. Now, I'm holy and healed. <clears throat> holy and healed. Ooh, I feel the glory of God on our bodies tonight. I feel the glory of God in our homes tonight. I feel the glory of God wherever we are tonight. Seeking greater glory. Glory carriers seeking greater glory. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. But tonight, healing you and your Monday. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord, right now as we get ready to deal with the people's money. Because Satan has done a number through Corona financially there's a lot of oh i just saw a lady today i saw a young woman today with two kids a single mom and here is what she said she said that she couldn't afford or she didn't have anybody to take care of her two little kids and the job would not allow her to bring the kids on the job so she had to quit the job to stay home with her kids. Now she says she is thousands and thousands of dollars in debt 
And she said she tried not to worry about it, but she has no idea of what's going to happen. I'll tell you this much. I can tell you what is happening right now. I believe God has a victory for her. But in the meantime, Satan is going to lie to her and going to try to put fear in her by telling her that everything is going to fail. Telling her that she's going to lose her house. She's going to lose everything, her mind, her emotions, the kids. Satan will tell you the worst scenario is coming. When Jesus has a victory to you, for you, Satan wants you to suffer before you get to the victory. So he'll put those uh, negative thoughts in your mind. So I pray for that young lady. I pray for her and her whole house for everything to work out for her in Jesus' name. So she's waiting on her stimulus and whatever else extra she gets with that. There's a whole lot of people like her. There's a whole lot of people out here right now trying to just to feed the family. What? Feed the family. When I saw parents not eating, when I saw those parents, the husband and the wife, not eating to feed their children. Everybody couldn't eat. Everybody could not eat. And a real sad, sad, sad story. As my dad used to say back in Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, back in the day, it's a sad situation. <laughs> it is. This right here is a sad situation. It's this part. A nine-year-old little girl, I might have mentioned it before, I'm going to tell it again. Nine years old. She's on virtual zooming in for her class, whole classroom, and her teacher. And all of a sudden, the little girl just breaks down in front of the whole class, crying uncontrollably. The teacher said, darling, darling, what's wrong? What's going on? And she said, I'm starving. I'm hungry. I'm starving. She and her other two siblings and her single mom were starving. She couldn't hold it in anymore. Poverty. The poor man's what? Captivity. Come on, y'all. They were in captivity. That little girl, that little innocent little nine-year-old girl didn't understand why she couldn't eat because Corona has brought serious poverty into the earth. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to the heavenlies. We're going in the supernatural realm to shut down poverty demons because they are demons. We're going in the spirit realm to destroy lack demoniacs because they are demoniacs. We're going in the spirit realm to heal you because when you're going through this type of trouble, your insides can be messed up and lead to your outsides being messed up. There are some people right now who are not feeling well in their bodies. Listen, I just saw people who were swelling in their bodies. Organ. Kidney failure. A a man just posted today on Facebook, pray for my wife. She has a tumor on her brain. Are you kidding me? A tumor on the brain. A tumor on her brain. That's his wife. Oh, I began to war for her as soon as I saw that thing. Because I've seen tumors leave. I rooted tumors out in Jesus' name. Jesus does all the work, but I do it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm a war for you. Jesus of Nazareth is still here. To yesterday, today, Friday, and forevermore. No sense in you being sick and got plenty of money. No sense in you are being healthy and broke. No. Put the pieces together. Everything is healthy. My body, soul, spirit, and my money. Healthy. So, here's what I want to do tonight. Um, 
I borrowed this from uh, Kenny Copeland. Kenny Copeland, who is a billionaire pastor. I borrowed this from Kenny Copeland because I want to release this. He's been releasing it for years. This is my first time releasing this, but I'm going to release it to y'all tonight. And it's going to bless your socks off. And it's going to bless your money up. Going to bless your money up. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, Lord, I thank you for giving us the power to get wealth. I thank you that we live in Goshen. Ooh. I thank you that we're in the overflow. My God, my God. I thank you, Lord of God. Oh, God Almighty, that I'm the Lord thy God. I'm the God of all flesh. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Oh, my God. Healing everywhere tonight. Healing all over tonight. Woo! So you can lay down in your bed and sleep, knowing that all is well. People worried about getting things cut off. I know they said they're going to hold up evictions, but one day they're going to release that thing. And you want to be paid up. I know they're trying to hold off. Um, um, what they thing with the mortgage? Uh, foreclosure. But after a while, the bank going to be hounding like some hounds on the on the trail. And I know they said they're gonna, gonna extend unemployment to September. September be here before you know it. Then what? Come on up in here, y'all. I'm praying for people to have businesses and jobs and careers and everything. He wished we would pro prosper and be in good health. Who said that, Pastor Deb Robson? Who said that that he wished we would prosper and be in good health? Even as our what? Soul prosper. You, we know who said it, don't we? Glory. So here we go, y'all. Here we go. I want to share with you tonight the seven laws of prosperity. Seven laws of prosperity. You hear me? If you're ready to live the life God desires you to have. It's important to understand whole life prosperity. Whole life. I want wholeness everywhere in my life. I want to be well in every area of my life. Begin today with these seven laws of prosperity. Well-being. Come on. Well-being. I don't want to be sick and land on a bed of languishing. I have no time to be Unable to walk right. Dizzy spells. Seizures. Can't hardly see anymore. Can't hardly hear anymore. Headaches. Constant, constant headaches. Constant backache. The devil is a liar from the pit of hell. God created us in his image. I want to be in his image all the time. Not just look like him, but I want to feel like him. Come on up in this church house. There's no poverty in heaven, is it? There's no sick people in heaven. There's no tumors in heaven. There's no heart attacks. There's no dialysis machines in heaven. Let mm, in the earth as it is in where? Let it be where? In the earth. Woo. Well-being. Success. How about this? Surplus. Abundance. Overflow. My God, my God. These are all definitions of the good life. Anybody want the good life? They always tell me life is hard enough. Uh-uh. Not when you have the good life. It's not, it's not hard about living even when attacks come. It's not hard about living when you got the good life. If you're sick all the time, life is hard. If you're broke and poor all the time, life is hard. But when you have well-being, Success, abundance, overflow, definitions of the good life. The good life of prosperity. And despite religious tradition, claim that it is ungodly or selfish. Prosperity is God's will for you.
for your whole family, for your children. My God. Ooh, all these neighborhoods out here with all this crime in it because of a lack. Lack of finances. All these robbing and stealing out here. All these carjacking because they don't have a job and they don't have any money. So Satan told them, go out and steal it. I bind up the theft demon. I bind up robbery demons, murder demons, drug demons in the name of Jesus. Have you ever noticed that the scriptures don't say God will give you just enough to get by? What? The scriptures didn't say God will give you just enough to get by. It didn't say that. Come on up in here. Pastor Brian Benjamin, God bless you, man. Pastor Brian, I'm going to tell you something. I told on my periscope, I saw on your periscope, when the people come on, it's big letters. And you can read it. Mine is so, see, I got big letters on Facebook, but my letters are so small on periscope that I can't even see who's talking to me. But I did see you, Pastor Brian Benjamin. My God, one of my armor girls who had been, been with me all these years, 15 years, and now has become a pastor. His wife, First Lady Chanel Benjamin. I love it. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of all the preachers that's come through heaven's best and out there working right now. Come on up in this church house. I'm going to do my job. I love preachers. And we have boot camp at heaven's best. We're raising up soldiers. Raising them up to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead, and to prosper and be in good health. Thank you, pa uh, thank you, Pastor. He said, I appreciate that, Pastor. Uh, we got to talk too, man. Seriously. Man, yeah, man. I love it. Did you ever know that God said, I just want to give you enough to get by? Love you always too. You and, Evangel you and First Lady Chanel. Instead, the Bible uses words like overflow. Overflow. Plentiful and abundance. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. According to his word in Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 19 and 21 through 21. 19 through 21, baby. Tell me he want me to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or even think in my mind. Some of y'all got to get some right thinking going on about your prosperity. Don't let the devil dictate your thinking over your money. Don't go about what you have. Don't go about what you had. Don't go about what you see. Don't go about all the bill collectors. Don't go about all the cutoff notices. Don't go about all the lack. Don't go about none of that crap. Don't go about your credit score. Stand on the word of God and believe that he is bigger than your credit score. He is bigger than every bank account. He is bigger than the devil. The devil can't stop you from being healthy or prospering. Woo! I love it. Hold on now. Casting down imaginations. My God. And being in control of your own thoughts. My God, my God. Hold on. Hey, Trinity. Trinity. Trinity, Trinity, I need that page, boo. I'm missing a very important page. Bring it to me right now. I'm on live. Come on, bring it to me now, the page that you cut. Come on, bring me the page, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Trinity. In the name of Jesus. This right here is sad. Someone sent me an email. Or you can email me, Pastor Angelo O. Jones at gmail.com. G for glory. G for God. G for Jesus. Someone called it a spiritual attack. This is what I'm talking about. This is why God has called me. I'm not your regular prosperity type of minister. That's why I'm mixing it with healing you and your money. Because I'm in the supernatural realm. But when I heard these real life stories going by supervision, Pastor Deborah, you got to hear this right here. When I go by, by real life stories and people emailing me 
and give me these factual information about their lives. Come on, church. Church, we got to do it. We got to do it, church. Here we go. While my daughter's bringing me the page, it says this. Hi, Pastor Jones. I know that you hear from God. Thank God I do. I know you hear from God. And I am in urgent need. It's a lot of urgency out here right now. When I see all those cars for eight hours in a line, five miles long, come on, trying to get a box of food. That's an urgent need. Sitting in line for eight or nine hours. Thank you, doll, baby. No, no. No, no, this one. No. No, I'm good with that right there. No, but this is what I'm looking for right here. Okay, thank you, doll, babe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, but that's what I'm looking for. Thank you, doll, babe. Yeah, because this is number one of the seven of the seven laws of prosperity. Now, here we go. I'm reading you what they said to me. Urgency. I'm in urgent need of prayer and deliverance. Not just for him. Hold on. Uh-uh, that's a woman. No, this is a mom sending this. this she said, I'm in urgent de deliverance for my family member's situation. This is on behalf of this woman and her family. You ready? Listen to this. Very Listen to it. There are seven, seven different households in my family who have either lost their home or facing some type of home loss or obstacles in seeking another place to live. My mother's sister's household, how that they are renting. My mom's household apartment building, foreclosure slash bankruptcy, illegal transaction when we refinanced. My household, apartment building, foreclosure, part of my mom's situation. My sister's household, apartment building, foreclosure, part of my mom's situation. My brother's household has not met with success in requesting an affordable loan modification. One brother has already lost his home to foreclosure and now facing divorce. Oh, this is not reality TV. It's real life, baby. Real life saints. Real life church. I'm not going to come with your prosperity the normal way. I'm going to keep it real. And most recently, my daughter's household, which made me realize that this must be a demonic attack on my family. This is not a coincidence. No, it's not. This is demonic. So would you please pray for us? Thank you so much. Woo. Woo. Woo, 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 this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Woo, woo. That is demonic. Poverty is demonic. Say so. Come on. Pastor, you know that's demonic. At ho seven families, seven families of one family, seven households of one family. A demon. Of lack, blockage, hindering, debt, no money, foreclosures, evictions, no bonification, divorce. Number one cause in divorce these days, M lack of money. So in the name of Jesus, everything I'm sending out to y'all for me and my house. I'm sending it to that family right there. Sisters, brothers, mama. Come on up in this church house. So, 
Let's go to the number one. Hold on. Hold on. Number one law of prosperity. Let's go there first. Woo. The Lord said, hold up. Let's go to third John, baby. It's number one right here. Let's go to third John. If I don't get to all seven of them tonight, I'm going to give you as many as I can. And I'll, I can complete it next time. Let's go to third John. Let's go to third John. I think I'm there. I am there. Third John. One and two. Oh, it, Pastor Deborah Robson. That's the first one. And prosperity is more than finances. That's the number one law. Get it. Number one. Prosperity is more than finances. And the first scripture that Kenny gave is First, the one you said earlier, Third John, one two, beloved, he's talking to us. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. What? Who's who's talking? Your mom or your daddy? Your friends, your loved ones? No, this is Jesus. This is God the Creator. This is the glory one. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Why do you think I'm, he brought me on here to pray for you, for you to be healed, to be healthy, and your money? This is it. For you to prosper and be in health. In health. Even as thy soul prosper. He want not just your money to prosper, but he want the inside of you to prosper, your mind to prosper, your emotions to prosper, your feelings to prosper, your uh, um, he want your um, everything to prosper. He wants your um, life to prosper in every way. So, ooh, so that's the first one. So what does he say? He says. Whenever someone mentions the prosperity gospel, especially in a negative sense, they are referring to money only. That's certainly part of living life more abundantly, but that isn't all Jesus had in mind. It would be easy to settle for spiritual prosperity, but that type of spiritual laziness does not bring glory to God and give full honor and give full honor to what Jesus paid for us to enjoy here on earth. It is the will of God for us to be made whole. Spirit, soul, and body. My God, my God, my God. And to be kept that way until the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. What? You heard to be kept that way. I want to be kept in perfect health until Jesus comes back. I want to be just like, hold on, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. What does it say, God? It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Make me whole, God. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be prepared, be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Hold on now. He said the very God of peace sanctify you holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y for you to be whole. I can't be whole with heart attack. I can't be whole with a stroke. I can't be whole with uh, with uh, first lady, what's that thing again in your legs? Si what is it? Yeah, sciatica. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Acid reflux demons. Killing people in the, in the middle of the night. Colon cancer. Pancreatic cancer. Are you kidding me? Seizures. Just body slam me on some furniture and crack my head open. Witching, witchcraft and voodoo demons messing with it. Curses. Warlocks. 
demons. Uh-uh. He said, I pray God your Holy Spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Make us whole, baby. Oh, Jesus makes us whole. Come on, somebody. He's making us whole right now. My God, my God, my God. So, what is included? This is number one. Prosperity is more than finances. Of the seven laws of prosperity, this is number one. What is included in whole life prosperity? Let me give it to you right now. Number one, spiritual prosperity. To prosper spiritually, you must be born again. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and make him the Lord of your life, your spirit is reborn and brought into Fellowship with the Father, Almighty God. Oh, my God, my God. When I was out of fellowship with our Almighty God, I was in church, but I wasn't in fellowship. What? Yeah, I was in church. I sat in the pews, but I wasn't in fellowship. Mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, telling the pastor to preach a good sermon today, but I wasn't in fellowship. I probably even said hallelujah. But I wasn't in fellowship, right fellowship. My God, my God. It's the intimacy, it's the fellowship, it's the total surrender to God. That's the first key in spiritual prosperity. Separating yourself from the world mm, to be made whole by God. Can't hold on to gambling when you're trying to be whole. Can't hold on to fornicating in a defiled bed when you're trying to be whole. Can't be whole trying to be a man with a man or a woman with a woman trying to be whole. Sodom and Gomorrah now. Can't be cussing out your mouth, dropping F-bombs and B's and D's and S's and trying to be whole with God. He want to make you whole. You got to give up some stuff that make you unwhole. <laughs> Ooh, whoa, come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, Pastor Deborah. I feel it right now. My God, my God. How about emotional prosperity? Oh, my God. We need, oh, God, hold on. We need emotional prosperity so bad it don't make no sense. The churches, I was going to say the churches are full of depression spirits, anxiety, panic attacks, fear, and all types of emotional Suicide spirit, almost breaking down. But guess what? I can't even say that now. Because Corona closed all the churches almost. So now instead of saying that all the, that lots of churches are full with, with, with emotional issues, now I got to say a lot of them zooming in with emotional issues. A lot of them on virtual church with a lot of emotional issues. Churches get ready to open back up though. All of them, every last one of them, I declare and decree it in Jesus' name. I decree that all the temples are open. I decree and declare it that every church in America is wide open. Every Christian church in Jesus' name. Be come on up in here. So, emotional prosperity, true peace and joy cannot be found in this world. Without Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lots of people trying to find peace and truth and happiness out there. Look at all those celebrities. Look at all those celebrities. Look at all of those Hollywood movie stars. Look at all those big CEOs of Fortune 500 businesses. Look at all the rappers. And all the worldly singers. Whoa, money, 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 money. Yeah. Show me one that got real peace. Show me one that has real joy without Jesus with that money. Mm -hmm. How come millionaires are still committing suicide if they're so rich? How come they're still jumping off buildings or jumping off their yachts into the ocean? 
with something wrapped around their body to weigh them down. Mm -hmm. The man with his name on the business school, University of Maryland, he did it. He had his name on the school at the University of Maryland Business School. And he jumped off his yacht. He jumped off his boat to the water. Mm -hmm. Come on up in this church house, y'all. Real joy and peace cannot be found in this world without Christ. You can't prosper without Christ the right way. Come on. You can be rich as a billionaire. And if you're not whole, W-H-O-L-E, you got some stuff missing. Mm. Something ain't right. Come on, Jackie, son. Hello. I see you in Tennessee on Facebook. Come on up in here. Come on, Pastor Brian. Come on up in here. I had to separate myself from the world to prosper. I had to get out of the world to prosper. To me, to be made W-H-O-L-E. And to be H-O-L-Y. Come on, somebody. Two holies. W-H-O-L-L-Y and H-O-L-Y. I wanted both holies, baby. Come on up in here, y'all. That's why we see people remarrying over and over. What? Using antidepressants. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Using antidepressants. The Bible says you have no healing medicines and that you take all that medicine in vain because it cannot cure you. Read your Bible. I didn't say it. God said it. Hold on a second. Antidepressants. Hold on. A person is depressed because life is weighing on them so hard. That they can't really concentrate or see their way out. Uh, they're so depressed because their finances are jacked. Or they're unhealthy like crazy. Things are going wrong because... The Bible declares, y'all, the Proverbs, I know what he said. He said, money answer it all things. And if you don't have the money, you can't answer all the things. And you need to answer all the things. Ooh, come on up in here. And only Jesus can make, have the answer for all things. Jackie Sutton said, I was only married for two months. But was something about my ex-husband for almost 10 years just never worked out. She's with him for 10 years, but married to him for two months. It never worked out. Well, a lot of people in that situation, you know why? Because the whole 10 years he was probably with him, he was probably fornicating with him. He was probably fornicating. That opened the doors for him not to be successful. Come on, y'all, we opened doors. I did it. Come on, somebody. Who? A lot of church people did it. Pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets, prophetess, deaconess, deaconess, trustees. Psalmists, choir members, ushers. Everybody wasn't perfect. She said, yes, sir, you're right. I was. See, all the time for came with him. Hmm. But see, like I heard a preacher say the other day, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Woo! I know what that meant. And that's real. You can get the milk for free. Mm. But look at this now. Hold up now. Antidepressants. Tell the truth, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. She said, tell the truth. Gotcha. Antidepressants. So you depress. So I take an antidepressant pill. And I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. But I'm going to believe in this pill more than I'm going to believe in the healing power of Jesus. I'm going to throw that pill down right here. About 10 minutes later, I'm flying high. I'm happy now. All of a sudden, I got some joy, some temporary joy. But it's better than no joy. Is what you're telling yourself. But the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is what gives you strength. Not the anti. The joy of the Lord strengthens us every minute of the day and every minute of the night. 
But I don't have no joy unless I take that pill. I don't have no joy unless I take that liquor drink. I don't have any joy unless I smoke that dope. Unless I shoot up that hair on. I don't have no joy unless I can have sex with as many people as I can find. My God, my God, y'all. I don't have no joy unless I'm gambling. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. If you surrender mind, body, soul, and spirit, I'll never tell a person to stop taking their medication. But I'm going to pray for you to be totally healed, made whole, get that depression demon out your mind, get that panic attack devil out your emotions, Get that fear out of you. Get that suicide thought out of your brain in the name of Jesus. And get that poverty demon off your life. Whew. Still on number one. Hold on. Using antidepressants, contemplating suicide, turning other people down. Ooh. Turning other people down with your mouth. Because you're upset with your own life. There's no way to live. Turn other people down because you're not happy with, with your situation. Turn other people down. Uh, let me tell you something about that. I just got this scripture. It's in Exodus. Here's what it says. It says, And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. For that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we, the people, that ye murmur against us? Woo! Stop it. Your mouth can make you poor. Your mouth can make you unhappy. Your mouth can make you sick. Woo! Come on up here, y'all. Speak the things of God. Speak blessings. If it's not a compliment, don't comment. Who turn other people down. Using drugs or even questioning their God-given gender. That is not the abundant life Jesus came to give us. And it is anything but prosperity. Jesus fills the voids. He brings answers where there were questions. Yeah, I'm Woo, all the answers come from Jesus, buddy. What's the question? I got the answer. From Genesis and Revelation, babe, I got the answer. Woo, woo. He brings answers where there were questions, confidence where there was insecurity. How many insecure people out here right now doing Corona? Insecurity is running through the earth, seeking whom he might devour. If you're insecure about holding on to your property, you're insecure about how you're going to feed your children or how you're going to make it. If you're insecure about, I've got $20 left in the bank, and that's it. My credit is shot. I need to get another place in Cain. Uh-uh. Shut up, devil. Devil is a liar. You'll get ready to win, win, and win. God has answers for you right now tonight. And I'm going to decree and declare some things over you tonight in your body and in your money. That's going to set the captives free. Come on up in here. Hold up now. Confidence where there was insecurity. Hope where there was once hopelessness. The hope. Mm, hope of the Holy Ghost. Ooh, come on, somebody. Hope in the Holy Ghost. Hope in the Holy Ghost. You heard me. Hope in the Holy Ghost. Number three in prosperity is more than finances. Mental prosperity. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Ken Copeland, for... Sharing this with me. Mental prosperity. The world thinks of mental prosperity as simply 
knowing it all. But God has something much better in mind. Mental prosperity includes revelation knowledge. Good God Almighty. Stop right there, preacher. Because they got to see like that. They got to think on that one. A lot of church folks don't know nothing about revelation knowledge. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Revelation knowledge comes straight from God. God can speak a word into you and tell you the future while Satan is lying to you about your future my God my God look at God God can give you a revelation knowledge of something that is happening right now in the present that you know not of and he'll give you the whole story so when they come to you, you already know. You say, I already know. Oh, Revelation knowledge that he's getting ready to bless your socks off. He's getting ready to prosper you. Miracle money is coming to you. That he's telling somebody that's rich as I don't know what to bless you financially. It could be someone you don't even know or someone you heard of or someone you might know. He, he could tell someone to hire you that was the one to hire somebody else, but you interview and they couldn't say no to you. He can turn your business around. Corona trying to ruin your business. Oh, by the way, I heard yesterday in Washington, D.C., where I was born. I heard yesterday a man said, in Washington, D.C., honey, I hear this. Over, he said, come on, over 400 that's a lot. Well, Washington, D.C. is a big city. This man said over 400 restaurants and bars who have been in business for 40 years or more are all closed down. They are all closed down. Those restaurants closed down. How many mom and pop stores are closed down? How many clothing stores are closed down? How many small businesses all over the United States of America have closed down because of Corona? Ooh, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Mental prosperity. You got to believe God, trust God to change your situation around. Turn it around. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around for him, Lord. Turn their health around from sick to healthy, mm -hmm. from poverty to rich, from lack to abundance living, to overflow, surplus. My God, my God, my God. Woo. Mental prosperity. You think just knowing it all. God, but God has something much better in mind. Mental prosperity includes revelation knowledge. You need to be able to hear from God. God can show you a vision. And guess what? Come on, Lisa, to in DC. Evangelist Lisa. On Facebook in DC. Man was on news last night being interviewed. Said they've been there for over 40 years in DC. 400 bars and restaurants that are now completely closed down. What are they going to do? As far as money's concerned, what are they going to do with their emotions and their feeling and their depression about their business sinking? This is y'all healing you and healing your money. Thank you, God, for giving me this to do. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for speaking to me while I lay on my bed and giving me revelation knowledge to do this. Now, I, just, I didn't think of this. I, didn't, I haven't done this before. This is a regular now, every Friday night, 9 p.m. So, Revelation knowledge in a dream. Ooh. How many times have God showed me something in my dream? God. Hold on, oh God. Sorry, I was going to say something, but God showed me something. You know when I do abortions on Monday, on Wednesday nights, God gave me something. I wrote it down, and I'm going to say it on the on the abortion would have killed me on this coming uh, Wednesday. My God. 
Oh, I can say it now. He told me I can say it in a different way. What? Oh, my God. I can say it in a different way. You ready? He said, I can say it now. It wasn't just for that. Okay, here's what he gave me. For the abortion, this week I'm going to deal with a Christian doctor who's aborting babies. And he said he's a Christian. What? But he's aborting babies like nobody's business. So, God gave me this. For those people that are abortionists, theirs is this. I was called to abort babies. What? I was called to abort babies. No, we said, we said we were called to preach. They were called to abort babies. We were called to lay hands on the sick. Come on. We were called to save souls. So he said, I can say this to y'all right now tonight. Say this. I was called to prosper. Good God Almighty. I was called ooh, to live life more abundantly. I was called to be rich. I was called to be blessed so I can be a blessing to others. You can't bless other finances if you don't have no money yourself. And you don't even believe that God said the more you give, the more you get. You're scared to try. You're scared to go by the laws of the universe. The more you give, the more you get. Pay your tithes and offering. And God said, said, see you on our part of blessing more than you can, fit, can hold. You're so scared because you're lacking. People stopped tithing since Corona. And that fell right into the devourer to curse your money with a curse. Uh-uh. Say, that's it, Pastor. I was called to prosper. I was called ooh, to be rich. I was called to be made whole. Oh, I was called to preach. I was called to minister. I was called to help others, be a blessing to others. Abortionists, I was called to abort babies. I was called to kill babies. God gave me that while I was... That's a, a, a revelation, knowledge. I, I saw a doctor say he was glad to kill babies. I saw him say it. I saw him say it. I saw him. I heard him with a camera in his face and mic up to his outside the abortion clinic. I love killing babies. And he said it like that. Possession. Anyway. The world thinks of mental prosperity simply knowing it all, but God has something much better in mind. This is way better. Revelation knowledge, mental abilities beyond our own. Whoa. Y'all think y'all real smart, don't y'all? I know I do. I think I'm real smart. Yeah. Not smarter than God. But I got a college degree. Mm. I got Several degrees. Mm. I was cum laude. Cum laude laude. Mm. Good for you. But let me tell you. God's mental ability is beyond our own. He's got more than just our own um, um, mind. Ooh. He wants to put some revelation knowledge in that mind. If you're educated and put the spirituality on your education, limitless baby, you're on your way big time. And a sharp mind. Uh-oh, something just hit me. Boom, people just hit me. And a sharp mind until the day we go home to heaven. Uh-uh, uh-uh, stop right there. Mental prosperity is a sharp mind going home to him. Alzheimer's. Dementia demons. Uh-oh. A lot of millionaires with dementia. Mm. A lot of millionaires don't even know they're millionaires anymore. They can't even run their own financial affairs anymore. They don't even know nothing. Hold on. A sharp mind. How many educated people, lawyers, doctors, scientists, politicians, 
die out of their mind. Whole bunch of them. I'm seeing judges, DAs, district attorneys, senators, congressmen, mm -hmm. NFL coaches, and big boys with dementia, without a sharp, they once had a sharp mind. But something happened to take their sharp mind from them. I'm going to tell you this right now. In the name of Jesus, right where you are, I declare you have a sharp mind. Why? Because I decree and declare this. Let that mind that be in Christ Jesus also be in you. Ooh. Dementia can't take my mind when my mind's like Christ Jesus. Off how you lying dolphin in the pit here. You can't make me not know my own ABCs. And how to count one, two, three. And know my family members. You can't take that away from me. That mind of Christ Jesus is in my mind. Sound mind. Ooh. That is mental. I was called to have mental prosperity. Jesus Christ. Pastor, she's receiving it right now. You will never, every one of you, you will never ever suffer from dementia. Or Alzheimer's or lack of memory in any way or form. In Jesus' name. Amen. My God, my God. Woo. And I'm still on number one or seven. So it looks like I'm going to just do the first one tonight. Woo. Because there's a lot here. Woo. Woo. It means. Casting down imaginations. Ooh. Casting down imaginations. Can't nobody put imagination in your brain like Satan. Have you imagined defeat when you get ready to win? Have you imagined that everybody talking about you, hate your guts, make you think that people are against you when they're not, they love you? Thinking that you're going to be poor and lacking when you get ready to get rich. Thinking that you won't get a job. Thinking you can't get a house. Thinking you ain't going to keep your house and you ain't going nowhere. Thinking they're going to re repossess your car. Your car ain't going nowhere. Thinking you're going to die early. Thinking you're going to die young. Thinking you're going to drop dead. Thinking you're going to have a heart attack. Thinking you're going to have a mental breakdown. You're going to be crazy. Or whatever. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. None of those demonic things. Casting down imaginations right now. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and being in control of your own thoughts. I declare that Satan have no more control over your thoughts anymore. His, his manipulation demon, his, manip his manipulating of your thoughts are over in Jesus' name. Woo! Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy up in here tonight. Healing you and your Monday. Mm, 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 mm. Hold on. Hold on. Physical prosperity. Uh-oh, here we go. My God, my God. Physical prosperity. And this is from, all this I'm giving you now, in the seven laws of prosperity, and this is the very first one. Prosperity is more than finances. It sure is. Woo! Physical prosperity. The world system of healing makes a god of the hospital and a god of medicine. Small g, baby. Small g. The world system of healing makes a god of the hospital and a God of the medicine, and a God of the doctors. Small g. Actually, for the most part, it leaves God out entirely. And without God, it will not work. You can't be healed without God. You can get a temporary good feeling, and you can get the fake out. Oh, it's gone. The tomb is gone. The cancer is gone. And all you depended on was the hospital and the doctor and the medicine. And a few months later, a few years later, that demon is back. 
Because it wasn't cast out in Jesus' name where he can never come back. Nigga, I command that tumor demon. I command that cancer like this. Go. You must obey me. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. The word said in Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. I got the power. He gave them power. And the authority. Ooh, authority is big time, baby. Gave power and authority to cast out devils and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Well then, and on top of that, my God, I command that demon of cancer, go to the place that Jesus Christ set aside for you to go. Sealed by the power of the Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> Never to return. Ooh, come on up in here, y'all. Feel that thing. Feel the power. Feel the glory. Come on now. The anointing is here right now. We're in the glory right now. Healing you and your money right now. Uh, you're not going to be poor and sick or sick and poor. My God, my uh -uh, healthy and rich, healthy and prosperous. You better hear me up in here. Never to return. There it is. Periscope. Come on up in here, y'all. I feel the glory right now. Go! Hmm. Chronic pain. <laughs> you lying dog. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. Thought you could stay and, and continue to bring chronic pain in someone's body. Go now. I cast you out in Jesus' name. Hold our peace. I'm talking to your mind right now. I'm talking to that depression demon. I'm talking to that depression. I'm talking to panic attacks. I'm talking to suicide devils. I'm talking to fear demons. Hold thy peace. I remember in the Bible, in the gospel, Jesus told that demon, hold thy peace and come out. Ooh. Good God, I'm going to shut up your mouth. Stop your lying talking. Stop your lying. Because that's all you can do. Truth ain't in you. And come out now. Hold thy peace and come out. And he shut his mouth and came out. Never returned. I feel the glory of God right now. Woo. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Feel that glory right now. Feel. Hold on. Give God praise right now for his presence with us right now. I feel the heaviness of his presence. I feel the divine reality of God's presence in this whole thing right now tonight. I feel healing going forth into our bodies, our mind, body, soul, and spirit right now, and our money. We'll never be the same again. Uh -uh, you're not going to make me poor. No, you're not going to fight. No, I mean, you're not going to make me just, just is mean. How you doing? Well, I'm doing all right. I'm so and so. Uh-uh. No, with a smile with boldness. Woo. I'm doing fine. My if I'm getting ready to bless somebody. I don't know. As soon as God told me who it is, I'm going to bless somebody. I, I got a giving anointing on me today. What's the day? The day is Friday. I'm going to give somebody. I'm going to... Who can I give to? Ooh, ooh. Cause you're the head and not the what? Yeah. Not the tail. You're above, right, boo? And not where? Mm. Beneath. You can give it me. First lady said, "You can give it me." Here, first lady, take it. <laughs> well, take all that money, take all that prosperity, first lady. She said, "I received it." <laughs> Woo! I feel good right now. Physical prosperity. You're making a small G God out of the hospital, out of the doctor, out of the medicine. And you're leaving God out entirely. And without God, it won't work. God has a better way. Honey, you want a better way? God has a better way. Hey, you. You. Periscope. Facebook. Twitter. You too. You want a better way? He wants you to walk in the supernatural role and divine health. All the days of your life. Ooh, ooh, this is real, y'all. Y'all, this is real. This ain't no play. I'm not just whistling Dixie here. Yeah, this is real. I'm not playing around with this. This is real. Like I said, this is not reality TV. This is the supernatural power of a supernatural God. Who has supernatural powers. Working supernatural signs, wonders and miracles. On a natural world. 
That's the God I serve. You understand that? Church, you better get this. Sister Janice Gray on Facebook said, praise the Lord, Pastor. Call first lady. I said, praise the Lord. I, said, I love, come on. I love using in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sister Gray. Healing on your body. Healing in your mind. I'm healing you and your money. My God, my God. So you have enough money to do whatever you want to do. Whatever you need to do. Every, every need met. Supplied. In the name of Jesus, no more sickness and disease, no more witchcraft spells, no more voodoo warlock spells, no more. I shut up all those incantations being spoken over you in public and in private. You know how many witches probably spoke over me in private, in their little meetings, in their little, in their witch coves. I'm sure over the last. 25 years, they will call my name a million times to no avail. Why? Because he that's in me mm, is greater. <laughs> His 24-hour security have made me holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, and holy, H-O-L-Y. Come on up in here. Doing the same for you right now. I'm dealing with your body, mind, your emotions, your feelings, and your financial situation. He wants us to be so healthy in every area of the life. Ooh, until we see Jesus, until the day you die. People dying broke. Can't leave their children or dying. Some people dying and leaving their children, their family in debt. No more. Uh uh. Mm mm. Are you ready for this? You ready for this? Supernatural and divine hell belongs to you right now. All the days of your life. Relational prosperity. Uh oh. Only God can truly prosper you in the area of relationships. Uh oh. Uh oh. Janice says she's claiming in Jesus' name. Uh oh relationship. He is the giver of good and perfect gifts. He can bring reconciliation where the world would say all hope is lost. He can grant you a strong and lasting marriage and healthy family relationships and friendships. There is a special peace in relational prosperity. He wants you to have it. Uh-oh, right there. Right here. Come on, get a little closer. Come on. Come on, come on, make it personal. Everyone out here, all human beings want relational prosperity. Everybody want some loved ones. Want to love and want to be loved. Satan can deceive people, tell them no one loves you. Oh God. You are like a man on an island. All by yourself. Liar. No one wants to deal with you. No one wants to talk with you. No one wants to hang with you. No one wants to do anything with you. Your family members. Not speaking to you. Your marriage on the rocks. Husband already over there in another place. And you in one place. Or he already gone off with his mistress. Uh, divorce court papers already there. No. Children being disobedient and rebellion. I talked to a mama who, 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 whose son hadn't spoken to her in 10 years. How you not speak to your mama in 10 years and you're the only child? You're the only child. And you haven't spoken to your mama who loves you in 10 years? And she wants her son. She says so. Woo! Woo! Y'all hear me? So I declare relational prosperity belongs to you now. You have the right pros the right relationships that God will bless all your relationships now in Jesus' name. Some relationships have made people unhealthy because it was an unhealthy relationship. Soul ties. Un Listen, some women and men have shacked for years. I've seen a woman who shot with a man for 18 years, 18 years, 
and know what he did. And they had mm, two children. After 18 years of living with this man, then he leaves you and goes off and marries another woman. The 18 year relationship now is a soul tie that you can't shake. You're miserable. You can't get it out of your mind. Only Jesus can break that. It was an ungodly soul tie anyway because you shot for 18 years. Had babies out of wedlock. And they used to say back in the day when I was a little boy, living in sin. When you shack with someone, when you live with someone you're not married to and fornicate, it's a defiled bed, but you're living in sin. So that's a, 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 a ungodly soul tie. And it's got to be cut by the power of God so that you can be free. There's a lot of uh, saved people still got ungodly soul ties, still tripping off the past relationship, still tripping off the ex-husband or the ex-wife, still tripping off the friends that didn't run, the best friends that they had for years, and boom, something happened, and there was a falling out. Are the kids not talking to them? Are you not talking to your own mama and your own daddy yourself? You better come on up here. Are, you, are, are siblings not talking with each other? That's ungodly relationship and right now anybody in any situation like that or anything close to that I now declare that you now have relational prosperity Ooh, Jesus. love right relationship with God and the people Ooh. hold on I just heard something Give me, you have favor with God and with man In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, people are showing you so much love. You can't believe it yourself. <laughs> oh, folks who haven't spoken to you in a long time. Gonna call you up and say I'm sorry. But I'm back in your life. If you'll have me. Woo, come on up in here y'all. My God. My God. Marriage is a put back together this very moment. <laughs> Turn up the divorce papers right now. <laughs> Canceling the divorce lawyers right now said, said, Lord, I won't need you anymore. Me and my wife have reconciled. Me and my husband have reconciled. Daughter knocking on the door. And you open the door and say, come on back. I welcome you back in the house. Ooh, come on up in here. Y'all, this is awesome. That's all I can say. This is serious right here. Tell the whole world, tune in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this to YouTube tonight. Tell everybody, come on Facebook and Periscope, watch it, go on Twitter, watch this. Who don't need this? I need it. You need it. Your mama and your daddy need it. Your sister and your brother need it. Your aunts and uncle need it. Your nieces and your nephews and your cousins need it. Yeah. Woo. Accomplishment prosperity. Accomplishment prosperity. In other words, favor. F-A-V-O-U-R. Favor. My daughter in there, her, her name is Favor. The youngest, the youngest out of our nine children, out of seven daughters and two sons, her name is Favor Israel Jones. The favor of Israel. I don't know about you, but I want the favor of Israel on my life. God's chosen people. So, in other words, favor. When you have favor, it opens doors for you. Uh-oh. It causes things to go your way. Even when in the natural, it may not seem possible. Woo! Woo! When you succeed at something, at something, you prosper. God desires us to have success in life. Supernatural favor. Oh, Hold on. I decree. See it wrong just asked the woman this morning. What does it mean to decree something? What does that mean? To decree something is when you decree and you declare that this is the way it's going to happen. And you have the law backing you up. The laws of God's word backing you up. When you decree something, you're decreeing it from the word of God. Jesus Christ. So guess what? It has to come to pass. It has to come to pass. Nothing can stop it. Because the authority of God's word, the, the, the law of God is behind the decree. Because it's backed by the word of God. 
So right now, I decree over you right now and over my family, I decree and declare that we have, oh, my God, my God, supernatural favor with God and with man. My wife says she received it. Honey, I'm going to say the same thing. I receive it. I don't know about you, but I receive that favor. My God, I receive that. We need it in order to be successful in life. Favor. So people somewhere right now can be sleeping in the bed. And God will come to them and give you favor with that person. And next thing you know, they're like contacting you. Say, you know what? God told me to do this for you and buy you a brand new car. Paid in full. God told me to bless you with this. Or come and pay your mortgage off. They're coming to you and say, I, I want to pay your mortgage off. I don't care how much it is. But come on, I'm going to the bank with you. Or just tell me what you need. I'm going to get a certified check. And I'm going to pay your whole mortgage off in full. I declare it on you. I receive it too. Pay my mortgage off. With the favor of God. Come on. A million, they'll be that can do that. And, and won't even miss it. Hold on. Honey, got this one. Ready? Pastors like me. Like Pastor Brian Benjamin over here. Pastors. Someone can contact you and say, I'm going to buy you a brand new building for a church. Find a building. Or find a lot, and I'll build it from scratch for you. A church. God told me to do it. You have favor with God. God told me to build you a church. Or either to buy that building and give it to you. No cost to you whatsoever. And need to be restored, fixed up, I'll fix it up too. My God, my God. I receive that right now. Buy my building for the heaven's best Heavenly Beth Hill and Deliverance Church. I don't mind moving from that address. I don't mind moving from 8311 Old Branch Avenue to a brand new location that someone paid in full for. I said favor. Success. Last one. The last one that's part of, hold on. I have given you so far six uh Things that are included in whole life prosperity out of prosperity is more than finances. I got, I got one last one. It's called, oh, here we go, financial prosperity. Now, here, here we go, we're hitting your money now. See, we're going to hit your life. We're going to hit your mind. We're going to hit your relationships. We're going to hit your accomplishments. We're going to hit, oh my God. Uh, 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 we're going to hit everything for you. Your body, everything. Now we're hitting financial prosperity. If a man came to you needing clothes and you didn't have any clothes to give, both of you would be in trouble. We are to prosper so that we might provide abundantly for our own families. Bless those around us and fund the work of the kingdom of God here on earth. Fund the work. Fund, finance the work of the kingdom of God here on earth. That's financial prosperity, baby. This is the basic fundamental truth that runs throughout the entire Bible. Every time there was a need, no matter what that need was, God had a man somewhere who had the resources. Ooh, the resources. I like that. Spiritually, mentally, or financially to meet the need of the people. Whoa, what a lesson tonight. Oh my God, my God. While you see law in that, while you're thinking on that, I'm going to ask you right now. Start blessing right now. Our ministry right now. Cash out. Heaven's best. Dollar sign. Heaven's best. One, one, one. Come on. Cash out right now. Don't even think about it. I'll be used by spirit no matter how much it is. Cash out right now. Dollar sign. Oh, by the way, Thank you, Pastor Deborah, for cash apping uh, uh, the other night. 104 return to you. Now listen to me, y'all. Heaven's best. Dollar sign. 111. Or 
PayPal me at Heaven's Best Church. PayPal me slash Heaven's, one word, Heaven's Best Church. Or cash out at dollar sign, Heaven's Best, 111, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Start the giving process now. Start the blessing right now. Believe God that as you give, more is coming back to you. As you sow, you're going to have a harvest like you ain't never had before. This is good ground. Let me tell you something right now. I'm going to teach you things that you've never been taught in your life. Why? Because I've got revelation knowledge from God to teach it to you. I'm going to bring it to you hard. I don't mean hard against you, hard against the enemy. I'm going to bring it to you to defeat the enemy and that we win. God wins, we win, we win, we win, we win. Everything wins. Y'all hear me? Everything wins. I break all assignments of the enemy against your finances right now in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of poverty off you right now. I break all curses of lack off you. I break all curses of debt and failure, financial failure, financial sickness and disease. I break the curses off you right now in Jesus' name. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things are added to you right now, added to you right now, added to you right now. Ooh. El Shaddai, more than enough right now. The God of more than enough right now. The God of more than enough right now. I love y'all. I love y'all right now. So, next Friday, I'm going to start with number two. And number two will be, let's see now, what would number two be? Let me see. Now, that was just number one. Good God Almighty. That was prosperity more than finances. What's number two? What's number two? I don't know what I do with it. Number two. There it is. Tithing is tied to prosperity. After that, debt freedom is key to prosperity. Ooh, I'm going to bring this stuff to y'all. Seven. My God. Ooh, you must know how to give and receive. You must know how to give and receive. You must choose God's system. You will have what you say. Oh, God. This is so good. I can't believe it. Anyway, I love y'all. In Jesus' name, be blessed. We win. Guess what? I got something to tell you. You heal. From the crown of your head, soles of your feet, crown of your head, to the tips of your toe. All pain is gone. All swelling is gone. Every malfunction in your body has been corrected. Every dysfunction in your body is now functioning perfectly. Your mind is clear now. Ooh, in Jesus' name. Guess what? Your money, you have no idea right now what's happening. In the supernatural, God is increasing your money as we speak, as you give, as you take care of your 10% tithe. I don't care, you are on your virtual TV with your holy hill, Vince Lisa. Okay, you are on virtual virtuality with your church. You still got to pay your tithe. You're a church member? You're not a church member. Pay your tithes here then. Until you find a church to pay your tithes to. Dad gummit. Well, you couldn't pay me not to tithe. I'd be so afraid, so scared, it wouldn't make no sense. Why? Because I know if I don't tithe, my finances will be cursed and devour will eat up our financial life. Not going to have it. And your health with it. But in Jesus name. I declare you a tither. I declare you a giver. With a good heart to give. I declare you a sea sower. And I declare you a healthy. And I declare you a saved, sanctified, holy ghost, filled, blood, what? Tongue talking. Love you. God bless you in Jesus name. Amen.